Hello. Hi there. Welcome to A Diamond in the Rough. It was a bit rough. Anyway, I'm Simon Cooper, and behind the camera is Dory Cooper. Hi. And we're from the Cooper Strip Club. And we're going to find out today if there's anything worth stripping. So, come on in. Now, if the camera hits the ground, that's Dory tripping. So, anyway. So, come into the, one of these bedrooms. <coughs> this place has been abandoned now, not lived in for about well over 60 years. So, it's like one of those TV shows, Life Without People. So, it's pretty cool. Love these sort of places. So this is this room. So let's go check out some more. Lead the way. A couple of these front rooms. And um, down this other room is a cool one. See what I mean? Holes in the grounds. Yeah. The back lean-to is completely was crumbled down and uh, we think maybe a cow came in here one day and stuck a hole in the floor. So, um, and this, if we get attacked by swallows during the day, don't be surprised, we suddenly jump. And there's swallow nests everywhere, they're flying around, spring. Trying to dive bomb us. So, I thought I might strip a bit of this door. This will be a bit of fun to see if the swallow, swallow crap has done anything. Um, thought we might do a bit of the floor here um, and we'll do a part of the front door. Check out this fireplace, this is um, pretty neat. This is, when I first looked at it, it was this bush trying to trying to live, going to the light. So um, that one's pretty cool. So we're going to get ourselves all set up and then about one camera frame we'll be back to you ready to go. Everything's masked off inside as well as here and I thought because we're a diamond in the rough we'd do a diamond. Now we spray as I touch the trigger I move my hand so that way we get minimal amount of drips and runs that sort of thing. Now this should be quite rapid being absorbed Thirsty, thirsty paint. Oh, this is crusty dry and it's a thirsty as. So we just let the, the stripper's gonna drink up real rapidly. Just see if I can remember which side to spray on. Where are we, Simon? Where are we? Wow. We're in a cool little rural district in the Manawatu called Beaconsfield. And I was just driving down the road here one day and this house just popped out at me and I knew I had to do something so in this cottage through a bit of research I've worked out was built in the 1880s and as I said earlier it hasn't been lived in for probably 60 odd years it's a working men's cottage I had a chat to the guy who owns the place and he can remember it about 60 years ago when he was on horseback as a kid with his dad and it was empty then. So I'll just let that drink for a moment and I'll show you this cool bit of... So it's been empty for over 60 years? Yeah, we reckon it's about 140 years old now. So my hope is that this door's gonna really pop. The cottage had a name, didn't it? It did. So, tell me when you can see that. Yep, um, kind of. Kind of? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was in fielding, um, doing a bit of research at the library, and um, this cool lady, Vicky, she came along and um, she had this book. She actually lives in the valley here somewhere. And um, she gave me this uh, book to take away, and it's all called The Shadow of a Great Name, Beaconsfield District. And partway through, I not on that page. I actually found, see what we can do there. Can hold it straight. There you go. Was, was this house. And that was pretty neat. And it's called, um, they call this Little Red Cottage. And it's because, of course, it's red. 
most of the house has self-stripped itself. It's um, these pieces here. I don't know if you can go along here. Where the rain comes down, 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 all the paint underneath sort of gets left, so that's the longest, but the lead is just all crumbled away. But because of a bit of overhang here, this has lasted better. Okay. And it's also had over a hundred and something years worth of baking, hasn't it? Oh, this has been mega baked. So, we'll leave that now. We'll come back to this um, afterwards. So we'll go inside now. We'll see you in there shortly. Putting the stripper now onto the swallow poo door. Speaking of them, they have a nest of five in here, so we're yeah, a little bit annoyed with us. Getting dive bombed from time to time. But that's alright. We'll be gone by the end of the day. They can have it all back. Again, just always move your hand as you spray. If you go like this, you're going to get runs. If you move, you just lightly puff away. Don't even have to squeeze the trigger to the end. Don't don't have to go. Just puff, puff, puff. Less stress on the trigger, lasts longer. Less stress on you, so you can spray for longer. So the finish we're dealing with here, besides the bird doo doo, we're talking about shellac, aren't we? Yes, very important. This whole room is 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 finished in shellac. Shellac is a very old antique finish. Um, it's what French polish is made from. French polishing is basically the method of application. But shellac is, a lot of these old buildings were finished in shellac and they often have additives put in it to make it tougher. So we'll, um, that'll, who knows, I don't know exactly what to expect from the bird poo, but I um, the shellac will go very rapidly. So what I'm going to do is, just down here, there's a bit of flooring that cleared away. So we'll let Dory get her camera in the right place. Yes, sweep the floor's head in. 60 years. <laughs> so, again, don't know what we're going to find. Who knows? If I've done this wrong, yep. The sucker is pointing at the top, so just turn it around to when it's in the right place. If you find that it just gets a bit of an airlock in there like that did, just get it flying again. Oh, we'll soon see what the wood is here too. Yeah, it, it, it could well be Totra being the region it's from here, but we'll find out. The beautiful thing I love most about no sanding is the ageness of the timber stays. That's right, we haven't mentioned that, have we? No sanding. We, our mission is to restore these three patches we're doing without sanding. So this had great lumps of cow poo on there as well. And um, seems to be the theme of the day. So we'll let that just soak away and um, It'll basically, it's going to dissolve what's there, whether it be paint, varnish, cow poo, or whatever. When you say dissolve, um, it conjures up in my mind dissolving of the wood as well. The purpose is basically pH neutral, isn't it? It's not going to impact that timber. Totally. It's, um, it's, it is, it's, it's virtually pH neutral. It will do no damage to the timber, which is really good, because the, the floor, but particularly the door, is actually full of borer. There's lots of borer. In, in this internal woodwork. And um, most people, if they touch it with a sander, you're gonna open up the borer and have all problems. But um, this doesn't. Now, just have a little, little play. I'll get you closer. So we can see. Well, the good news is there doesn't seem to be any traces of bird poo under it. But there's a bit of a crunch. So need another minute or so. Up there. So that's the, the shellac that's still um, not quite dissolved. So we'll just do a bit on the floor. I'm getting now a look at the colour that the wood's going to be. Oh, it's going to be right out there. Back to the floor? Yep. Cleaning 
was done, obviously, um, we just swept away the rubbish. We were actually hoping to find a bit of glue as well because we saw there was a bit of linoleum, linoleum lino stuff. It was. There, but um, no glue it seems to be placed there. One day we'll show you on floor glues. So what I'm going to do now is give this a scrub with some steel wool. Let me try and have hiding here. And we, uh, on our guide, you'll see that we normally tack off what's on the surface. But in this case, that's all been worn away through cleaning and all sorts. So we grab our steel, grab our steel wool. This is a European wool, long-stranded. And we just give that a wet scrub. So it's wet with stripper. This steel wool is very sharp. It's grade two in the grades. But as long as it's wet and you're scrubbing in the direction of the grain, there's no drama. So the reason that we're doing this whole program is there's so many places like this get bowled and just bulldozed or burnt or whatever. And we, it may be that some parts are too far gone, but there'll be things that can be restored. Now. So, one more thing. Brush to summon. Yes. Now, this may be, may want to be finished. Let's have a look. So, this is what we call a grit embedded pad. It's a, got a, a grit put into the, into the weave. And this blue one is our flusher. And it's designed to rinse the timber, all those residues of stripper and whatever other stuff there. It's a slow drying solvent, so it gives us a bit of time to work with it. Low odor. And we just we're not neutralizing, we're just mobilizing, aren't we? There's yep. Residues of the stripper and whatever's sitting on the wood. Oh, mobilizing, that's a good word. Not that one. So you can get those residues off the surface and onto your rag. See the wet colour, this is what that wood would be should somebody finish it with anything. Not the shine, but the colour. Always look at the wet colour as your guide when you're looking at if it needs further restoring or not. That is amazing. And if you sanded that too, it would come back to that new and freshly timbered, milled timber, which is a completely different game. So it keeps all the antique what character. Well, not sure yet. It's hard to see through the dark, isn't it? It, it could be Totra, Kari, I don't think it's um, Rimu. Um, it's not Matai either, is it? No. But. Um, So we'll just um, buff that off. Now, because we've got a little bit of time up our sleeve, I'm going to give this one more round. I'm going to put another little stripper on it to see if there's any benefit. Sometimes repeating the game gets more of the colour out. On our guide, this is two and three. Getting out what's in the wood. So we're just, I mean, even that by itself, I and mean, if you had a coffee table made out of that, that's a pretty amazing look in itself. So I'm pretty stoked so far there. So we'll let that soak for three or four minutes. Come back to our bird poo door. If you're looking for that nice, silky, smooth sound, little bit there but the majority of it is is good so I'll just give that a tiny puff there before I take that off which will be very shortly 
You guys stay right where you are. I'm gonna go and check the front door just to make sure it's wet still. Fortunately, our cottage isn't very big. I often say to people that you can leave things to work while you do another project, like a cooking program. Let's spy on them. So once you get up and running, it's go, go, go. Okay, so have we got the camera right? I don't want to miss a thing. So we just. We tend to drag down rather than push up. A very good point. The When you push, very good chance you're going to dig in. And mm. uh, it's way more work, I believe. You're using a flexible putty knife too, aren't you? Rather than a, a stiffer one. Yeah, this is pressed steel. So it's, it's very flexible, always comes back straight, normal. Normally if you bend a blade like that, it stays bent. This is a really good one from America. Might be from Canada. We're not from America, we're from New Zealand. coined a phrase for this sort of thing, we call it strat, which is stripping art. And this is going to work well. Thing to note about Bora too, the holes are actually the exit, not the entry wounds. And a lot of people get quite upset about Bora thinking it's like a termite, that it's going to just destroy everything. But it's only after certain aspects, isn't it, the sappy parts of the timber? Yes, totally right. Um, I had this conversation so many times. The um, Bora is, first of all, Bora only eats sapwood. It's full of sugar. Um, and in an old house like this, which is 140 years old, it would have done its thing. It would have eaten what there is to be eaten. So if you were to take these doors and put them into a new build, you're not going to have your house eaten because this bit of wood had borer. It's not the only time you know if you've got new borer is if you can see new holes. And if a bit of dust lands on the ground, it might well be because of the storm that was last week and the house moved around a little bit, that the dust from 30 years ago fell out. And you can often see, floorboards are quite fun, you can often see the um, where the aura starts and stops on the same planks. People are often thinking about ventilation, should we be wearing masks and things. Purpose is a low odour product, isn't it? There's no ammonia there. We have good ventilation, we've got air coming through from both, or well, several places. We well, can see by the plastic moving, yeah. there's um, no vapour here, I probably can't smell a thing. <coughs> um, if you, so ventilation's important, um, just means the air is changing as you go. And if you want to wear a, a mask, don't just wear a dust mask, wear a solvent dust mask. So charcoal. With charcoal in, yeah. So, that there is, um, now part one of our guide, which is take off what's on the wood, is done. And as I said, the, the good news is that it looks like the bird poo is going to not leave any blemishes. So now we go into part two, which is stripping what's in the surface. So when the very first coat of shellac got put on, it soaked into the grain. And, and that's what we're going to get now. Shellac's my favourite, the patina afterwards is, is so like rich honey. I, our whole thing is not to lose the character. We, I mean some people may want to have a door with bird poo all over it but I think this will be better. <laughs> so we'll leave this for um, a couple of minutes, we'll go back down to the floor, give that the second round. Just re-puff any patches that
grab the wool so if you brought a sander into this sort of situation you would have a wrecked floor not because there are sanders it's because the floor has got bore in it you open up all the horizontal trails that they bore did yeah. behind the scenes comes like a switchboard also floors can only be sanded so many times exactly i mean the the floor that you probably see on the edge here don't know what you can see um there's a tongue and groove in the floor there's only about six seven mil before you hit the tongue and just wipe off anything that's quick and gooey oh that rag just dropped out of nowhere isn't that perfect and then we go back to the flusher and again just ignore the shine but the color is what that floor will be should you clear finish it with any brand of anything so it's still People over restore their woodwork because they look at the dry colour, it's ugly when it's dry. Yes, once this is all flushed and dried off, people then often judge the dry colour, and that's a mistake. It's the wet colour that we're interested in. So, this is gorgeous. This is, this is yeah, as you say, a beautiful table. If you made, even a dining table would be amazing. Casual furniture, anything you like. Yeah. So, in a house like this, there's lots and lots of it, obviously. I don't see anyone soon pouring their hard-earned cash into restoring it completely but there's a lot of materials here that can be repurposed and they say deconstruct it. And this floor was sanded by somebody many moons ago and it's still sanded. We've not changed that dynamic. Okay so that's now Touch it so we ready. can the sound of the smoothness. Yes I will get these gloves off. So it's silky smooth. When this dries, um, we're going to show you a finish, which is pretty cool as well. A very wise man once said, it's the finish that you get to live with. Okay, so up to here, I might shut myself a new bit of steel wool. Excuse me, camera. And here we go. Just give it a. We say to keep the surface wet. Try not to scrub a surface if it's fully absorbed up and dried out looking. Don't go in and scrub that. Just do another quick little check. Let's have a look at him. See how the roast is going. <laughs> Okay, looking good. And over to here. So we just oh, wow. This is so cool. interesting this one you can see there to there I don't know if you can see that Dory. Yeah, okay. um, down here you got the borer and then there's no borer that's this looks like Remu that's heart Remu sap Remu and there is in 140 years it's not going to go across into the heart well wow. I just want to take this door home. We have um, in our repertoire these copper, soft copper bristle brushes. They're really good for this sort of thing. We call them a detail brush. 
just a, and of course there's a lot of these coarse ones you can get, they end up ripping the wood up. These are brilliant on carved surfaces, on furniture, and on that. Okay, so then a rag in there. So, as with the floor, so this is the last part, this is the flush, the rinsing of it. So, wow, this is the colour. <laughs> it's a big wow. It's, this is uh, the first day of spring. And it's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. There's going to be all these people up skiing if they're in that type of part of the world. Or the beach or something like that. And but the Coopers, they do other things. See this honey tones, uh, Manuka honey tone, that's beautiful. Again, no See. risk to the opening up the borer. And the difference there between the dry and the wet, that, that wet colour, how completely different it is. Now with the stripper you put it on and we leave it to do its job. When you get to the flushing stage you're not going anywhere, you're spraying and scrubbing at the same time. And because it's a rinsing thing you don't need to give it extra time for that. If you use fast drying solvents for this, one, they stink, um, and because they dry fast, they drag the finish residues back into the grain. So it's better to have a slow drying solvent, gives you more time to work, less stink. See and how he's rolling his rag so he's not pushing it back in. Yeah. That door looks like it's never been sanded ever. I can see horizontal um, blade marks yep. from when it was on the thickness of planer. And this area that we were in was when it was colonized, it was supposed to be a lightly wooded, gentle rolling country, but it was a densely bushed area. Heaps of beautiful native timbers, the totras, the remus. And pretty much, you cut yourself a log down and it's almost like home co. Took it down and, yeah. Wow. I've done a, I've stripped a lot of doors. And this is a goodie. So, again, Give it the old touch test. Oh. I didn't feel I can say the, the girls when I show ladies the product they have a it's as smooth as something. A baby's bottom. Yeah, so I, I don't know if I feel I can say those things. Squeaky things. Ah. Oh. That's beautiful. Cool. It's really stunning. Well. Well we can actually take this mask. What about on. moisturizer? Are you gonna put that on first? I'll, I'll take I can take this off. Nah, put the moisturizer on maybe, because then you're going to over slap the... Okay, she's the boss. Um, okay, now let's, um, we'll go back out the front. So we'll um, be back in a blink. It's had probably, I don't know, half an hour and a bit. And it's had probably four light applications. And it's, um, I've done some little tests here. And the actual surface is quite lumpy as well. So. What we need to do here, I don't know if you can see that around the corner, it's coming away. Now this blade here, it's a, a we call it a four edge blade, because it's got four edges, but the edge is curved, it's not flat, and so it's quite ideal for these type of things. Um, Doing diamonds always complicates proceedings a little bit. 
wouldn't be as much fun otherwise. So all the paint coming off is is liquefied, so they haven't got the, the lead risk. The beautiful thing here is that Sam will show you how to get behind the mouldings mm. without taking them off. It's a huge mission and a break of the at the moment, but that can change. Being a villa style door, they may have bought this off a catalogue um, versus the other ones. Look totally, a lot farm of... Built, don't they? Even back then, a lot of stuff was brought in. Okay, getting into the mouldings. A good old teaspoon, yay. And that can be used. I'll get all this caught up here off camera. But I'll be doing exactly the same as that. When they put the red paint on, it was probably many, many years after being pretty raw. And so there's actually indentations in it, which um, I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna leave any paint in them or not. Sometimes it adds character, the, the patina. So next thing we're gonna do is get out what in the grain as much as possible and so we've got um, our brushes and so it's wet with stripper I've got this time a brass brush for these um, parts here I've got a feeling a little bit more bristle strength will be required I think the copper one will be just a bit too soft Simon so, mean, if somebody was intending to paint um, the door um, would it be necessary to get the stuff out of in the grain? Um, yes, still to as much as possible. What we want for new paint is a, an absorbent surface. And if you've got old finish in there getting in the way, we don't need to make it as clean as for if you're going to clear finish it again, or clear, clear finish it. Where a lot of paint finishes fail is there's lots of the old finish still there getting in the way. So I'm just stroking that there. These brushes are really cool. Still not 100% on the wood. We're sort of toying with kari. Um, but this is not a kari area. So as we said before, maybe our door for is kari was brought in off a catalog. Um, the kari and totra look very similar except for the colour. Carries more yellowy golden, Totra's got more of a pink hue to it. The grains themselves are, are quite similar. But the both conifers for those who don't know what Kari and Totra are. Both, yeah. um, beautiful big majestic pine trees. Very oily woods, a lot of resin in the timbers. That's naturally there, this is why they last so well. Totra particularly. Used in farm, farm posts and things and battens a lot. Sounds pretty sad, but there you go. Now, down here where the mouldy bit was, been I wrecked my diamond. Coming away nicely. So now what I'm going to do, some mouldings, is I'm going to get our grip pad, make sure it stays wet. Just 
better to use a few light coats than one big massive heavy coat of a gel in my opinion. This video is all about my opinion I suppose, so here we go. Okay, grip pad again. Remember, it's got the grip embedded into the weave. I'm actually told that it's not a weave. Yeah, I guess that's why they're called, called non-woven pads. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure one of my sons will mention that to me. Rightly so. Okay. So like in the other room with the bird poo door, there's a remnant of the shellac left in the grain and sort of tint the colour and this will probably have some colouring of some sort. We'll get it to a point that it looks really good, however, whatever it is. As we go, we're collecting our rubbish, so we're not letting all the stuff that comes away. Give you a look. So easy to scrunch up at the end. Okay, I think we will now flush it and see what we got. It's to your advantage if you were starting at stopping at any point to flush it while the residues are soft because it's easy, easy on you. Exactly. I wouldn't come back tomorrow, for example, and, and do this part. Definitely not. Sometimes we get people who run out of flusher and it's a bit of a telltale sign that they didn't flush at the same time. And um, you should, usually we allow two part stripper to one part flusher. It can alter depending on the project. It's very rare to run out of flusher. So get into the flush again like before. So it's not doing any of the stripping work and um, it's a mistake to expect it to. It's only removing the residues that are sitting there. Yep, people often think it's a neutralizer. It's not. Nothing to neutralize. Okay. See all the pigments. There's a little bit more I can get out of there, I believe. Looks good from here. So spray, scrub. Again, there's not much sanding going on on this floor. Maybe oh. it's just corrosion from the weather, but um, it looks like there's a lot of horizontal lines. Yeah. I think this one has had a hammering. When they probably put that red paint on, they probably gave it a quick rough cut back. Wherever it's been under cover more, it's incredibly smoother. Now there's a little bit of grain up there that says Totra to me. And being in the, I just can't imagine them buying a, a carry door of a catalogue for a workman's cottage. It doesn't seem to fit with the story. And I sort of have the feeling it was Totra. So we'll carry on flushing now. Simon, can you show how you manoeuvre the putty knife to get behind the mouldings? Because we haven't done that. Haven't done that. Why don't you do that? So we our putty knife has been modified. We've got a saw edge in it. You can see that. And what we do is we 
It's easier with steel wool, but we can't use steel wool outside. With rags. Yeah. This is easier than this one. It's, it's quite, um, it's good of a gap there, so that'll be able to be pushed in a bit. But um, the rags, when you're doing ragging, and you can see it coming off. So you've got a natural gap there, and you've got a natural gap behind the moulding. Yeah, this moulding's been nailed on, so there's technically a gap there, and there's a gap under there. And it all depends on how much goes behind there. This is reasonably clean. So I can get all that goo out of there. So that's all good. Again, if you're re if you're repainting and you leave a whole lot of crap in there, you're gonna high risk of that's gonna wreck when you finish. All right. So I'm just gonna continue flushing over. Um, what I'll probably do is where I think I can even it out a little bit more I might just put a bit more strip on so I can um, it's quite all right to go backwards and forwards a little bit and if you think you're going to get a, a better result but it needs a little bit longer. You don't want to cut into the flesh and um, then you will have to sand the whole thing which would be a shame. Yeah, we, we're trying to, the game is, is to use the stripper, which is thin, it absorbs in, it's pH neutral, so it's not going to damage the wood, and it's going to dissolve, soften the residues and, and um, the paint, etc., and bring it out of the grain. Um, so being a door like this, the reason I chose it was I knew there'd be a lot of this baked on lead that is soaked deep into the grain, and it's easy to show you on ones that are like the bird poo door, which goes bang, bang, done. This one, it's good to have one that's got a little bit more drawing effect to do. Looking really good, looking good. All I've been doing is more flusher, more with the grip pad. So I was doing extra grip padding and the colour was leading me all the way. So there was a couple of spots I put a bit more stripper onto. So I was going backwards and forwards a little bit and trying to blend it out. And as I said, I didn't want to make it so it looked like a brand new door. The, the red door is its history um, as part of its time and um, and also there was um, discovery that at the top it was very very smooth through this uh, awning uh, looking after it more down here got absolutely hammered um, and so there's a bit of a different sound as you go down um, and then I used the, the finer brush the copper brush uh, I used the brass one to start with but I finished off getting in with the copper one and it, it looks really good. So hopefully the camera picks up those colours really well. Where the mould was at the bottom, that's all blended in as well. And you can just... So I don't think we need to do any more, but put a finish on it. So I'm going to dry that off. So we just use our cloths. This will take away diluted, um, the diluted residues from the flusher and then it'll just air dry there's no water in our products at no. Coopers, is there so um, it doesn't take long to dry out well and also no water means no grain raising if you get grain raising then you've got no choice but to stand up I just love the the antiquiness of it. I'll try and get you in closer so we can see. See the beautiful. So I'm gonna take this masking off, let it all do a better job soon. through my hand. And down through there. Get this. I want it to dry. 
dry nice leaves. What will people say as they drive down the road? They'll say it's a diamond in the rough. They said that Cooper's <laughs> strip club's obviously been there. <laughs> now, if any of you are thinking about well, how do you get a hold of this magical product, it's really, really easy. You, what do you do, Dory? Go to cooperstripclub.com. There's two S's in the middle there. What's really, really important is send us photographs of what you're stripping. Can we have a look at that door, please? Oh, well, I'm going to sales mode, was I? Yummy, yummy, yummy. So let's just let that dry. And what we're going to do now is go and um, show you about wood finishing. So that's the stripping part of the game done. And I should still those people feasting their eyes on it. So when it dries, it's going to play tricks on the eye. It'll be patchy in parts. Um, the, um, but don't worry, the wet color is what it'll come back to. Important thing to remember when you're restoring anything is the wet color. Yes. Now. Who would know? So we'll come back to you shortly. We're going to go and show you our wood finish. Check that out. You um, saw it earlier when it was wet with flusher, and um, so now it's dry. It's been just sort of coming up around an hour, I suppose, since we um, left this. So this is um, nice and dry. Um, down on the ground with the um, flooring there, we've still got little bits of flush are coming out um, and that's fine the dry parts now if we were going to finish that floor with um, say a polyurethane or or a oil of some sort we would need to leave that to properly dry and so we normally leave it to the next day that's where the, you're painting it or varnishing or whatever you're doing but we're going to show you a finish that you don't have to wait till tomorrow so um, now um, yeah and also as we said earlier the wet color is the finish color and so a person might see this now dry and in this case it's, it's actually pretty even so they'll probably leave it um, but they might like the they might like the color this is right now but they if you want to keep that color um, you're going to need to use something that's acrylic like a pol uh, an acrylic urethane um, personally I like it when it was wet um, so I'm going to show you that and again you can see distinctly the, between the heart and the sap with the, with the uh, borer so I quite like pointing this sort of thing out so I'm going to introduce you to a real cool finish that we make um, this is one of my earlier inventions the um, this is called moisturizer and um, this is a like leather care skin care for wood it's, it's quite different um, it, it actually doesn't dry so we don't leave it all sticky and wet it's like silk when it's finished it's a, and it's a blend of synthetic gum oils and waxes it's um it's amazing stuff so you pour some of it into a container which i just did earlier so it's a reasonable thing in winter it's a little um thicker than in the summer if it's a little bit too thick in the winter just warm it up in a bowl of water hot water warm water okay check this out get ready for this this is gonna be pretty outrageous beautiful thing by it not forming a hard skin you don't have to be good with your brush work you just slap it on a bit like honey on toast so it kids, can absorb kids love doing this this is a, a, a totally non-toxic finish and it has no smell none of those um, thinners and urethane smells so one of you can use this on chopping boards and fruit bowls and all those sort of things now you don't have to be a good person with a brush okay you can get around corners and stuff it's um it, it just goes on drinks in now it doesn't matter if it's a hot day or whether it's a cold day or whether it's a humid if it's um dusty day oh yeah i mean like in a room like this with there's dust everywhere the last thing you want to do is put on a polyurethane and find dust blowing up onto it so this is this is cool as some things are thirsty um like a window sill in which case it would drink it up and you'd give it more exactly it's an important point so the moisturizer is on wham bang look at that 
Um, we now leave this technically for two days, not to dry, but to absorb. And you'll very quickly see, um, not quite yet, but I guarantee there'll be areas that will drink it up before we buff off. We will buff it off reasonably soon because we're not going to be here for two days. So don't worry um, about the brush marks, anything like that, because they're not going to stay. Ah. Let's put a big C for Coopers there. Um, so now we're going to go to the floor. And as I say, because it doesn't matter that um, it is, the flusher hasn't all come out, not a problem. And this is a game where people think, oh yeah, yeah, it's all dry like that. And you watch this fella come back. It doesn't matter how thick you put it on, the more you can get into the grain, the better it's going to last. Now this finish is amazing for long, long term. We've, we've been around nearly 40 years now and we've got displays that we have that we take to our live events that we've had for over 30 years with this finish. And what you do is from time to time you feed it with more of it. You, you, it's a, we call it a living finish and a finish that dries hard um, even some of the oils every time you put it on it lays up on top so we'll go out to the um, front door again and we'll give that a splash as well so follow me this is Cooper I'm falling on my backside maybe hike yourself there a little bit So this one's more patchy looking with it being more dry. This is, um, um, but we trust in what we found originally. I'll show Dory that I can keep it off the diamond where I don't want it. The moisturizer too, it's amazing for, you get dry, dry wood that's like this, is being thrashed and this will, will give it back moisture that it's been hanging out for, not water moisture. So if you're painting, this is not to go oh, on. Oh, that's an extremely good point. If you are painting, do not do this. This is not a conditioner, a pre-paint conditioner. It would be a problem. If you were going to paint it again, that, that stuff that's ready for painting, that now, if you were going to if you decided you wanted to paint and you'd already moisturized you'd have to strip it out but why would you want to paint that i really like painted front doors um big grunty colors like dark blue and blue based red black have enamel a, paint i have a friend in auckland that would say strictly blue <laughs> I don't know if he, would, he would be just staining with these words the inside can be clear finished here, I see. Anyway, so we just bang, 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 on she goes. Okay, so you just literally, you, you go away and you leave that now for couple of days if you just can't get back to it for a week doesn't matter leave it for a week it's doesn't good to matter. demand feed it though the bits that gobble it up oh yeah it says like dry to, skin give me more if i was to go away for a week and come back it, it you would have needed to have fed it along the way um okay let's go back to the original to the swallow door okay so lots of holes in the floor so i'm just making sure i don't fall down one she forgot to put her vis jacket on, so she would be <laughs> safe as houses if she had that on. So, it's obviously just a few little minutes here, but it's going to, it will drink up more. Um, and so we'll give this, we'll probably give this another 10, 20 minutes, and then we'll come back to you when we're ready to buff it. See you soon. Okay, guys. Uh, you can see the floor how there's these dried out little patches these parts and these would be parts where we would brush more moisturizer on 
um, it wants to feed as I said before this would want you know a good two days worth of drinking time um, because we're we don't have two days to be here we're gonna take it off now it's not like in two days time it will have dried it will still be wet um, but it just will have more time to have a feed so dry cloth old towels really good this is boiled mutton cloth ran out of towels And just so you take off the main surplus and then you sort of give it a polish so this gives us what we call a mellow glow it's not don't like using varnish terms like satin or gloss or any of these sort of things this is a different finish altogether so that there if you if you are to touch it put your hand out through the screen and touch that that is absolutely silky as there's bits of bora no drama even it's actually just a feature of it people make furniture and stick artificial bora into it so you don't always have to when you buy an old house get out the sander um, and uh, this is often really really cool now this was a real treat this one's still quite wet but there are some parts that are starting to absorb right in now um, but again we'll buff them off so cloth again you can get people to help you with this this is an area that people that want to help out can do something without wrecking it You can't leave it on too long if like I said before if you're going away for a while just let it drink 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 as far as maintaining this when it's buffed off I mean that is sometimes we buff it off for people and they, they sort of expect that we're going to now varnish it or something and I say no 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 that's this is actually the finish this is when you have buffed this and you touch the grain or touch the surface you are actually touching timber you're not touching this application this door I want to take off the hinge and take home for maintenance um, a door's not in the sun like a windowsill so it could be years before it tells you it wants another feed just slap some more on and good. leave it overnight and buff it off good thinking there you because that's the next thing is maintenance what what can you expect from this well the front door this door and the floor are all different the floor you of course walk all over so if and you the dog yeah so whatever's on the what, what's some people make you take your shoes off coming in and so it's all socks it'll last a lot longer the um if you're just in and out with gum boots on it's going to get dirtier so you can actually just wash that with a um, bucket of warm water with a little bit of detergent not too much and just lightly um, wash over the floor and then don't leave the floor wet squeegee off any um, surplus and you'll be freaked out by, by the black goo that comes off and then the day it looks a little um, lackluster just simply slap some more moisturizer on and away you go again it won't go yellow like the urethanes do no and it actually gets better and better and better over time and also the thing is, is with a floor like this that's 140 years old, it's actually got a hardness to it, like a block of cheese that gets like this outer skin layer, and it's actually quite hard by time. So don't take it off with, with the sander. This is a decades and decades with a stomping. And the outer grain actually hardens. If you sand it, that's all gone, and it's back to being super soft again. Now, a door like this, as Dory said, is inside down the hallway. And this might only get another, might be 10 years before it gets another application. And what you do is, if it's looking a bit lacklustre, slap on some more moisturiser. If there's a marmite or vegemite print, from where you're from, if someone puts their paw print on it, then whack the moisturiser on, give it a quick grip pad, it's gone. So that there is that there. Unveiling time. Yes, I wasn't able to before, but I can now. I think it's stopping me.
this is the unveiling of a diamond in the rough. Drum roll. Uh, ooh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, ha, isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, that one is. Um, Should I get closer? Yeah, that one's fun. See the glow from the light. It's got a lovely burnished, aged colour there. People would see that door and see it's really for the tip. Mm. It's not. It's ready for another hundred years or more. Mm. We'll show you outside now, huh? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Off the moisturizer. Two days too early. But that's not a problem. The sleeping quarters here aren't good enough. No. Not a five star, my girl. Okay, so yeah. buffing off the stuff that's still there, but it's still enough to show you what it is about. Let's glow. Now, one of the things is with a front door like this, is the question will be, well, how robust is this finished? Well, none of the ingredients in the moisturizer will mix with water. So what we're doing is we're conditioning the wood to repel moisture. So all the ingredients are not water soluble. So basically it rains on this, it beads off and it's gone. And um, so it's ideal for this. We actually were at a show recently and a guy who had stripped his house of um, paint off his cedar weatherboards 10 years ago and he moisturized it and um, with his doing his maintenance it was still looking great we were we were really pleased so as dust from the wind and road film and things hit it over the time sometimes you get a bit of sweating if you had like a you really fed this with moisturizer and it gets smashed by the sun you'll get a little bit of bleed out because the moisturizer remember isn't gone dry and you just buff that straight off and it then equalizes out and then periodically you give it more and as we said it before inside, like the, the tongue groove door is going to be sort of every 5-10 years, something like this. A door like this, once a year, slap on a coat of moisturizer, give it a quick scrub with the grip pad, um, and, and then a buff off the next day, and it's good for another year again. It's, it's quite a, and you never ever have to restore it again. I mean, we're doing ourselves out of, um, of future paint stripping business, but we figure there's a bit around there to keep us going. So, there we are, we have a mellow glow. This door has had an absolute hammering, but I reckon it's come up for treat. So, nice and close for you. There's a little bit of leathering there, a little bit of, as things age gracefully, they get a few wrinkles. Apparently I'll get a few along the way. And it's looking great. So it's sooky smooth, a little bit different, and that's it. So we're done for the day, so catch you later.